Yo, what is up everybody and welcome back to another PGA 2K21 video. Before we jump into the video, I do want to say that we are live right now at twitch.tv slash respawn TV. We are going to be going all day leading up to the launch of PGA 2K21 at midnight Eastern time tonight. We're going to be doing some giveaways of the game. We're going to be opening up that sucker over there, seeing what's inside, and we're just going to be having fun. Going over the game, playing some rounds with the boys, all of it happening right now. Twitch.tv slash Respawn TV. This is also going to be the start of me bringing the webcam more into the YouTube. So be on the ready to see this disgusting mustache and this disgusting man bun a little bit more often. For today's video though, we are gonna be going over the multiplayer, the online component of PGA Tour 2K21. I know a lot of people have been asking questions. They've been wondering what the multiplayer is going to have. They're, going to, they're wondering what the online has. So we are going to go over it today. And if you want to see it in action, that's what's going to be happening almost all day today over at Twitch. So let's hop into the game. And uh, let me show you all what the online holds for you this time around. All right. So here we are. We are at the main menu. Uh, just like you saw in my earlier videos and the walkthrough of the game, the first impressions. You got your local match, your matchmaking, your create private match, and your join private match. So matchmaking, we'll go over first. Uh, matchmaking, you have uh, three standard ways of playing. You have head-to-head, 1v1, you have teams, 2v2 scramble, and you have wagers. The wagers are locked in to 10 per hole. So that is your potential winnings if you were to buy into wagers. Teams scramble, you get put into a 2v2, you do a scramble uh, with a teammate. And then head-to-head -head is just what you would think. You go in 1v1. It is on the pro difficulty set. Mano a mano against somebody for nine holes, either the front or back of a course. It is match play. And we were also told that there is the potential that different courses can be cycled out of the rotation as well. So hopefully we don't see just the same courses being used over and over again. It would be really nice to see some of the user-created courses get cycled into the matchmaking as well. Uh, you still have leaderboards, free-for-all teams, head-to-head, -head, winnings, which is your skins and matches completed. I am 2-0, by the way, and I'm in 10th place, so kind of a big deal. Uh, we were also told that different events, different uh, playlists could show up as well post-launch. They kind of left it all on the table. We could see different courses. We could see different playlists. Uh, so hopefully we see some really nice changes uh, to the matchmaking just throughout the development cycle of this game. Uh, but that is the matchmaking. That's what you're going to be looking at if you're looking to get into a game online, either head-to-head, -head, scramble, or in wagers. Next up, what you can do is you can create a private match. And uh, this will just look pretty familiar to you. You can choose whichever course you would like to play. Uh, this is the format that you get. You have Stroke, Stableford, Match Play, Skins, which max per hole is 100, and Four Ball, Alternate Shot, and Scramble. You can set the rules, which is which I'm sure a lot of you uh, are familiar with. You set the tees, the pins, the round length. If you want to do handicap scoring, you can do that as well. You set the conditions, just like you could last year, and here you can actually turn the crowds off and on dependent on what you would like what kind of atmosphere that you would like and then here you do the difficulty now you have the option you can do open you can set all the presets that you want you can even go through here and really customize it as well like if you want the swing difficulty at program you can do that if you want it so no matter who comes in they get whatever swing difficulty they're on you can set it to open and you can do this for every single setting that you have you can either be strict with your settings or you can keep it open so that whoever is coming in to play the match with you, it will bring in whatever settings they are using. So, you know, if you have a friend who's not as good as you or you're not as good as a friend and you kind of want an even match, this is where you could do that to give everybody the necessary advantage that they need in order to make a good match. It is completely up to you what you would like to do. 
Uh, but these are the options that you have for difficulty when you're creating a private match with your friends. Once you got that all set up, uh, there's a couple of things you can do. You can do room type as in-game party. So if you have a party uh, by clicking, you know, this little button and, and getting some friends into an in-game party, uh, they can join you off of, off of this once you create the room. Or when you're in a party, this right here where it says matchmaking, this will actually say if the if the party is still creating the match, it'll say waiting for party leader to create a match. Once whoever's making the match creates the match, this will then turn into join private match. So you can just jump right in from there. You don't have to, you know, hope that the little button comes up uh, to join it. You don't have to worry about the, you know, the the party maybe feeling because Steam, <laughs> Steam has a lot of problems sometimes when it when it comes to making parties. You can join it right from the home screen, which is a is is very nice. It's worked flawlessly for us. We've tested it quite a few times, and we have never ran into a problem with creating a, a party whatsoever. Uh, another thing you can do if you don't want to do that, you can actually set it to a name and password. So when you create it, it'll come up and say room name, room password, and then your friends, whoever's whoever's going, can come into here and type in the room name, the room password, and they can actually join from there. And then once you have everything set, you'll just create the match. It'll open up a lobby similar to how it was in 2019. You'll sit there and wait for everybody to join, and you will go play a match with your friends. And that's private match in a nutshell right there for you. So next up, we're going to take a look at online societies. So uh, a lot of questions have been swirling uh, about a singular topic, uh, and that is if offline societies of 2019 are going to be in 2K21. The answer to that question is no. The offline societies have been removed. Uh, when you go into online societies, there isn't an option to add AI or anything of that nature. Uh, if you want to play a season or a career in PGA Tour 2K21, you do have to do it through the PGA Tour career. Now, I know right off the bat, that's going to be uh, a miss for a lot of people. I would have liked to have seen offline societies make a comeback as well. But I guess the silver lining of that is PGA Tour career has taken a pretty big step. It has taken a pretty big step. I know people are worried about playing the same courses over and over and over again, but there are 36 of them, and I think that that is a very nice change. They also have plans to add additional courses as DLC this go around, so don't see why they can't add those straight into the PGA Tour career as a patch. Now that that's out of the way, let's hop into online society so I can show you what you get when you are creating an online society for you, your friends, TGC tours, whatever it may be. So when you first enter the society, you will see this. Uh, you'll have the official PGA Tour 2K21 society that you can join. And then you will have all of your societies that you are either a part of or have created. You can only create one society yourself. But after that, you can join up to nine, ten if you don't create any. You can be a part of ten societies all together so these are just a couple that i have joined and we've been playing in them testing different things out within the society as well but let's hop into the one that i created just so i can show you everything that you can do within the online society settings so when you first enter uh this will look a pretty familiar this is uh similar to how it was in 2019 you have your about us you have your message of the day this is also where the messages will show up from people who post them here on the left where that blank space is uh so this is similar to kind of the landing page that we had for 2019. if we go all the way to the right here you have the administration uh section of it so from here you can do exactly what you were doing in your private match you can set anything you would like you can set swing difficulty to whatever you'd like the difficulty to be or you can set it to open to allow anybody to bring their difficulty in and you can do that again with every single one of the settings that you have at your disposal for this game you also have your society settings so you can change the name if you want you can do the logo if you would like here are the different golf emblems uh you have creatures that you can do some nature if you'd like some objects 
And finally, all of your letters, numbers, right there at your disposal. You have your society style, like you did last year as well, so you can kind of show what kind of society you are. Um, security level, public, private, closed. You can have a membership fee if you'd like. You can enforce handicap. I don't know if handicap, if enforcing handicap is going to be used too much because we still don't know if the handicap has been fixed. We kind of have to wait for courses to be created and to play. Uh, then here you do the message of the day and the about us. Uh, if you have it set to private, this is where your requests would come in on whether you want to accept people or not. Uh, you can also uh, donate to the society so they can put it back into tournaments, whatever you like to do. Usually this is mainly for the administration if they want to put some money back into tournaments that they host. Uh, that's what this would be used for. Uh, but you can also donate currency uh, to the society as well. And then as an admin, you can just end the season. If you want to cut it short for whatever reason it may be, you can just end the season as well to get ready for a new one. Or if you're maybe at the end of the season, you want to move on to, to season two. This is where you would do it right here. End the season, move on to the next. Uh, one thing that is no longer in here uh, is the clubhouse. Uh, so in 2019, you did have the ability to make a different clubhouse that has been removed. So it will save people some virtual currency, some coins. But I did kind of like that touch to kind of make the background and to make the society your own. Um, but now it is limited to the screen that you see here and also your emblem. Once you create it, you can put it in there as well. This is where you'll see all of the members and their handicap. You have statistics uh, as well. You can do current season or all time for sorting. You have main events, alternates, total points, earnings, victories, top 10s, 20s. And then you have all of your scoring and performance as well. So that is all of the statistics that you have. And then you have your schedule. Uh, all events begin and end at midnight GMT, which is 8 p.m. for anybody on the Eastern time zone like me. You can add an event from here if you're an admin or you can add one from the play event. So let's go into the add event here. Here's where you set what day you would like it to start uh, and how long you would like it to run for. You give an exact date. You can set different requirements if you would like. Uh, season leaders based on previous event result history uh, then from here you can create the event now before you do that you have to come in here you pick the course that you'd like to do uh, these are the different filters I know some people were asking about what filters you could do uh, these are the filters you cannot do multiple filters I would like to see that get added at some point in time uh, but these are the filters that you are given you pick a course you set the name, you set the event type, whether it's a regular championship, major, or finals. Handicap scoring if you'd like it. Difficulty restrictions as well for the entire event if you would like. Then you have your entry fee if you would like to do an entry fee. Um, this is the percentage of fees that you want to actually go to the purse. The rest of it gets pocketed into the society bank. Um, so this is where you choose how much goes to the players, how much goes to the society. And then you have your bonus purse that you can pull out of the society bank and put into here for a bonus. Now, for difficulty restrictions, you can do one of two things. You can go by the society standard. So whatever you have your society set at is what it will be at. Or if you're if you're at like a final or it's a, a master event or, or whatever, master's event or whatever it may be, um, you can actually come in here and completely set different settings for the tournament that is being played. So if you want to run everything at pro, but maybe you have like, a, you know, the, the top, the top 15 people of your society all have a tournament that they get to play in special for them. Uh, you can turn it up to, you know, to legend for that tournament to, to give them a challenge. Uh, you have complete control, not only over the settings for the society, but individual tournaments as well. So maybe you have different flights that you want to do inside of your society, have a like people who want to play on pro, people who want to play on master, people who want to play on legend. You could do all of that in here via the event maker. Uh, and then you set everything um, from T, pin set. So if you want to play, you know, not from the back tees, but maybe the close tees on pin set two for round one, uh, you can do all of that right here. You can set wind speed, wind direction, time of day, uh, the weather, green speed, firmness, and fairway firmness. You can set all of that here for each round. You can do second round, third round, fourth round. It was actually kind of fun. We did a test one where we played from the backs, the back tee for round one. And then we did a round two where we played from like a, not the closest tee, but like the second furthest tee just to test it out. And it was fun to see like one round where it was like plus two. And then the next round where you could hit some of those par fives 
you could get real close for some of those par fours to see the rounds drop a little bit so it was kind of fun to play around with and it was fun to see you know scores kind of fluctuate in a big way depending on the round that you're playing you have peer control over everything within the online society all together so i thought that, that was kind of a cool addition as well so once you have everything set up, it'll tell you where you're playing. It'll give the event settings, and then it'll give you your round settings that you're playing round one, two, three, and four, and all of the different course conditions as well. And then once you are done with that, you can also go set an alternate event you want. Kind of like how I was saying, you want your main one to run on, you know, master, you can do an alternate for pro. You can open it up to everybody. If people don't want to play on master, don't want to play on legend, or, you know, you want to make like a, a pro-am or a beginning tour you know that plays along you can set all of that here main event alternate event as well you can do it all here depending on how you want to run your society and then once you do it you create the event and boom there's the event it'll show leaderboard as well and you've just created your first event for your society and that is online societies for 2k21 kind of falls in line with the overall theme that i think 2k21 is kind of falling into and that is customization it gives you all the options to kind of customize and make the society exactly the way that you want it it gives more flexibility for tournaments it gives more flexibility for the admins minus the drawback of societies no longer having offline societies and i do kind of miss the clubhouse in the back uh, those are all things that i can live without now that we have a little bit more customization in the societies and I'm a big fan of, of that customization that they've given us not only here, but throughout the entire game. And when it comes to PGA Tour 2K21, that is what we have for the online component of the game that we will get this iteration at launch on August 21st. They've made some strides in the customization that you could get for online. There are some places that I would like to see some improvements, but I do want to give them a chance to see what they can do for the matchmaking. If they cycle in courses, if they maybe give us some additional playlists, or who knows, if they do like a tournament or something that everybody can join into, I think that would be a lot of fun. Just got to wait and see what we get once the game actually launches for post-launch support. But I just wanted to release this video just to kind of give you an overall view of what you will get if you are looking for the online component of PGA Tour 2K21. Again, we are live over at twitch.tv slash respawn TV. If maybe you're looking to get a copy of this game, we are giving away some copies over there right now on the channel. We're also going through and playing some society, playing some matchmaking, playing some private matches with the boys. If you want to see how it works, you can find it over there right now. Hopefully you enjoyed looking into my room a little bit more. Uh, be expecting or webcam from here on out. Thank you so much for all of the support that you have shown. I think I've I think I've gained like 900 subs in the past two weeks. Thank you so much for that. Be on the lookout for more content here as well. We will be starting a society, like a respawn society uh, within the game. It's going to start on PC, unless I can get some amb ambassadors for every single system if i can do that we'll do that if not it more than likely will be pc and playstation i don't own an xbox anymore so can't do xbox so maybe we'll try to get an ambassador for xbox but there will be a society i will give you more information on that it's probably going to be about a week or two out before i can get everything you know around and scheduled and all of that good jazz but be on the lookout for it i will make sure to let you all know where you need to go to sign up to get weekly tournaments Thank you so much for watching this video today. I hope you have a great rest of your morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are. If you enjoy the video, please make sure to leave a like on the video. If you haven't yet, think about subscribing to the channel. Tons of 2K21 content to come. And I hope that you will join me on the adventure that is this YouTube journey now. Thank you for watching, though. Greatly appreciate it. Catch you on the next one. Deuces.